ever felt like the world of crypto trading just moves, well, way too fast. And you kind of wish you had a shortcut, maybe something to stay on top of it, or I don't know, automate some parts. Well, today we're taking a deep dive into exactly that. We're exploring three commas. It's a crypto trading bot platform, and it claims to automate and uh, enhance trading strategies for beginners and the more advanced traders. Yeah. and. Our mission here really is to unpack what this platform actually offers. We'll look at the features, its usability, and what our sources are saying about its performance. Is it actually reported to work? Basically, we want to help you figure out if it's you know, a worthwhile tool for your crypto stuff. We'll cover the good, the practical side, and uh, the really essential things you need to think about. Okay, right. So 3Commas is trying to simplify something pretty complex. Looking at our sources, yeah. what was the feature that really jumped out? Maybe something counterintuitive even that sets it apart from just, you know, trading normally on an exchange. Well, what's interesting right off the bat is how they try to make that initial user experience feel pretty smooth. The interface looks good. Yeah, quite sleek. Quick access to the main parts. But the real standout, I think, is the smart trade feature. This isn't just your basic stop loss setup. It lets you get really flexible with trade conditions, things like um, multiple take profit targets or trailing stop losses. It just gives you this layer of precision, you know, and control over managing risk that, frankly, most standard exchange interfaces just don't have. It's like a tool specifically for battling that market volatility. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And automation, that's where a lot of people's ears probably perk up. Three commas mm -hmm. has these different bots. Can you maybe demystify what these bots actually do? Which ones did the sources seem to highlight for different kinds of strategies? Absolutely. So you've got grid bots first. These basically automate buying low and selling high within a set price range. Really useful, apparently, in markets that are just moving sideways, range-bound markets. Then there are the DCA bots, dollar cost averaging bots. Now, these were really flagged as popular, and it seems like they're powerful psychological tools as much as anything. They take away that emotional roller coaster, that pressure to perfectly time the market. Instead, they automate these consistent buys over time. It can smooth out your average entry price, which is a good way to fight off that uh, FOMO and FUD we all feel sometimes. And then for more complex stuff, there are options bots, too. Right. That break can really clarifies the appeal. Mm -hmm. OK, the marketplace feature also sounds potentially useful, mm -hmm. especially for beginners. Right. Subscribing to bots. Someone else can figure. Yeah. But we always hear that disclaimer. Past performance is not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Right. So what did the sources really emphasize about checking performance on that marketplace beyond just the big shiny numbers? How do you actually do your own research effectively there? Ah, yes. Crucial point. The marketplace offers convenience. Definitely. But our sources really stress that the reported performance can swing wildly. It's vital you scrutinize things like the drawdown history. That's the biggest drop the bot experience from a peak, you know, a measure of risk. And you need to understand the strategy behind the bot, not just chase impressive return figures. I mean, a bot that killed it in a bull run might get absolutely hammered in choppy or bearish conditions. So your own research here means really digging into how the bot is set up, what market conditions it thrived in, and truly internalizing that past success doesn't mean future profits. It just doesn't. Okay, got it. Beyond the bots themselves, just having that consolidated view of your portfolio across different exchanges, that sounds like a lifesaver for managing assets. It all works through API keys connected to your exchanges. Huge convenience, obviously. But what's the absolute number one security practice people must follow when setting up those API links? given the risks involved. The single biggest one, unequivocally, disable withdrawal permissions for those API keys directly on your exchange. Make absolutely sure you do that. It means three commas can execute trades for you, but it physically cannot move your crypto out of your account. That's key. Beyond that, the usual best practices apply, but they're critical here. Use strong, unique passwords for three commas itself. Enable two-factor authentication everywhere on three commas and on all your connected exchanges. And be super vigilant about phishing scams trying to get those keys. Honestly, treat your API keys like your bank login details. Don't share them, period. Right. So wrapping this up, what's the main takeaway for you from this deep dive on three commas? We've seen it's, well, a pretty robust platform. Lots of tools, good for automating strategies, managing different exchanges in one spot. That seems clear. It has different price plans, even a free tier, though the paid ones unlock more advanced stuff, which could be an investment. But ultimately, whether it works for you really seems to boil down to careful strategy and um, using it in an informed way. Yeah, and I think from a slightly bigger picture view, what really stands out is this. Three commas offers powerful automation, no doubt. 
but its actual effectiveness. It's heavily, heavily dependent on the market and how you configure it with knowledge. It's definitely not some set it and forget it's magic money machine. Bad settings or just rough market conditions can absolutely lead to losses. And this kind of raises a bigger question, doesn't it? In this world where automation is increasing everywhere, how much responsibility do we still have? as users, responsibility to really get a handle on the underlying mechanics, the inherent risks, instead of just trusting the tool completely. It really comes down to staying informed, being prepared, even when you decide to let a bot, you know, take the wheel sometimes.